Hello everyone and welcome to the chapter number 67 of Blender Master Course Fluid Simulations in Blender. In this chapter, we'll be understanding about the various concepts of fluid simulations and we'll be using them to create a simple animation of a cup with some juice falling into it. And for those of you who are new to this course, you can watch the previous 67 chapters from the link of the playlist given in the pinned comment. Now the first question is, what exactly is meant by the fluid simulations? So in Blender, fluid simulation replicates the way how the fluids behave in the real world. It also takes into consideration the physical obstacles and also the physical forces like gravity and pressure in the blender scene throughout the simulation. Now to create a fluid simulation in the scene, we basically need to have two objects. One will be the flow and the other will act as a domain. To understand this practically, we'll be making this default cube as the domain for the fluid simulation. So let's also increase its size. So tab into the edit mode, press S to scale it up. Now let's come out of the edit mode and with this we have the domain for the fluid simulation ready. But as I told you before, we need one more object which will act as the flow. As a result, I'll be creating a duplicate of this cube by pressing shift plus P then right click and to view both the objects properly let's turn on the wireframe display. Now with the second cube selected let's scale it down like this and now we have two cubes in the scene the bigger cube will act as the domain and the smaller cube as the flow which in terms of fluid simulation means that the fluid will flow from the flow object which is the smaller cube and the volume in which it will flow will be according to this domain which is the bigger cube. To understand this in a better way let's apply the fluid simulation. So with the smaller cube selected let's go to the physics property and turn on the fluid simulation. Now in the type, select the flow and after this you will have a lot of different settings in the fluid simulations and the most important one is the flow type. So if I select this, it will give you various options like smoke, fire plus smoke, fire and liquid and since we want the liquid, so I'll be selecting the liquid and with this we have the selected cube object assign the flow type in the fluid simulation. Now let's do the same for the bigger cube. So I'll select this, go to the physics properties and turn on the fluid simulations. Now in the type, select the domain and in the domain type, select the liquid and now you will notice that we are not able to see the domain in the 3d scene and also this little cube that we added as the flow type is also looking slightly different so now if i press the space bar to play the animation then you will see that some kind of fluid is falling down from the smaller cube and this is the basic fluid simulation as you can see there was a simple flow of fluid from the small cube according to the domain object to put it in even simpler words you can understand it in this way that the object on which the flow type is applied in the fluid simulation will act as the source of fluid and the other object which will be the domain will basically act as the volume in which the fluid will flow. Now moving ahead, in the recent example, we saw that there was a very little amount of fluid emerging out of this cube. However, to get a continuous supply of fluid throughout the simulation, we need to do some changes in the physics settings. So with this small cube selected, go to the physics settings and in the flow behavior, change this to the inflow. And now if I press the space bar to play the animation, then this time you will notice that there is a continuous supply of fluid from the selected cube with the flow type and also the volume which the fluid is occupying is the volume of the bigger cube or the domain object. Now to understand about some more settings in the fluid simulation, we need to select the domain object. So for this, let's take the pointer back to the frame number 0 and now this domain object will appear. Also, if I take the pointer to the frame number 1 instead of the frame number 0, then the fluid simulation will begin and as a result, the domain object will disappear. So do ensure that you have the frame number 0 selected in the timeline editor and now I'll select the domain object and in the fluid settings, we have one more important option which is the resolution to be used for the fluid domain. So this resolution division setting basically controls the quality of the fluid simulation. Higher the value of the resolution, better will be the quality. But with that, it will also take much more time to render. So practically, it's advised to keep the resolution division value to somewhere near 64. But yes, if you have a high-end PC, then you can increase this value further to somewhere around 128. But in most of the cases, a value of around 64 will work the best for the fluid simulations. Now if I scroll down, and here you have a category which is called the liquid. And if this is turned on, it means that Blender is using a particle system in order to create the fluid simulation. You can also check this by opening the particle settings and over here you have an active particle system which is named as liquid. So in the fluid simulation, the fluid or the liquid is made up of the particles in the particle system. Now another important setting that we have in the fluid simulation is the initial velocity and the direction of the fluid. To understand these settings, select the smaller cube and over here you have the option of initial velocity. So if I turn it on, then now you can control the initial velocity of the fluid in any of the three axes. By default, all the three values are 0 meter per second and as a result, if I try to play the animation, then you can see here the fluid is flowing simply in the downward direction due to the effect of gravity. However, if I go to the initial velocity in the y axis and change this to 10 meter per second, then in this case, the direction of the flow of the fluid will be more in the y axis. And to practically see this, let's take the pointer back to the frame number 1 and press the space bar to play the animation. Then now the direction of the flow is in the y 
axis with a much higher speed. Let's take one more example of the initial velocity. So in the y axis, I'll change this to 0 meter per second and in the x axis, let's keep a value of around 4 meter per second. Now let's take the pointer back to the frame number 1 and now press the space bar to play the animation. And so in this way, you can give a direction to the flow of fluid and also control the speed of the flow with the help of initial velocity parameter. Now moving ahead, one thing to notice here is that currently we are in the wireframe display mode. But if I switch to the solid mode and take the pointer back to the frame number 1 and try to replay the animation, then this is how the animation will look. We have this beautiful looking fluid simulation that we simply created by adding two objects in the scene, the domain and the flow object. And yes, it might also be possible that in some particular cases, it won't be displaying this fluid simulation in the solid mode or the final rendered mode. And if you have this problem, then for this, you need to do some changes in the cache settings of the fluid simulation. To understand this in a better way, I'll again take the pointer back to the frame number 1 or maybe let's go to the frame number 0. Now I'll select the domain object and in the physics properties, if I scroll down, then here we have a category which is called the cache. And by using this, you can temporarily store a fluid simulation in the cache memory and in this way, that particular fluid simulation will get saved in your Blender file until and unless you need to do any changes in the fluid properties. Now to do this, go to the type option in the cache settings and change this to modular. Now turn on the is resumable and now if I scroll up, then over here in the fluid settings, you have this option to bake the fluid data. And what it basically does is that it will create a memory with the entire fluid simulation. And the advantage of doing this is that you can smoothly play the fluid simulation any number of times as it won't use your memory to calculate the fluid simulation again and again each time. So if I click on the bake data, then it will take some few seconds in order to bake the fluid data. Now once the baking is done, the bake data option will disappear from here and it will show the option to free or delete the baking data. Now if I go to the 3D viewport and press the space bar to play the animation, then in this case, we are not able to see the fluid simulation and this is because till now we have only baked the data for the fluid but not for this mesh. And to bake the data for this mesh, go to the physics settings, scroll down and over here, you have a category known as the mesh. Let's open this and from here, click on the bake mesh. Now it will take some time to bake the mesh. Now once the baking is done, you will be able to see the fluid simulation in your scene. In fact, if I take the pointer to the frame number 1 and press the space bar to play the animation, then you can see here that the entire animation is being played without much lagging and see this is the advantage of using the baked data in the fluid simulations. So whenever you are working with the fluids and you have finalized the simulation like the properties, the initial velocity, do ensure to bake the data and also bake the mesh in order to view the entire animation in a much simpler way. Now moving ahead, if I go to the material preview mode, then you can see that this fluid is having the same default material that is applied to the domain cube. And to give it some different material, let's go to the material properties and now to make it look like water, let's go to the base color and let's change the color to the light blue color. Now to give it a slight transparent look, go to the transmission and increase the weight to something like 0.9 or 1. Now scroll down and in the surface settings, turn on the ray trace transmission. Also to improve the quality, go to the render properties and turn on the ray tracing. Also, let's open the material properties again and in the base color, let's make the blue color even more lighter. And now we are ready to view the animation. So let's go to the first frame and press the space bar to play the animation. And with this we have this final fluid simulation ready where we have this basic water like fluid with a simple blue color and the source of this fluid is that tiny cube which has the flow type and the volume of its flow is the cube with the domain type. And now moving ahead in order to revise what all we have done in this chapter so far, let's try to create a simple scene with a cup and some juice flowing into it with the help of fluid simulation. So for this, let's select the domain, press X to delete it. Let's also select the small cube and press X to delete it. Now to model a simple cup, let's add a cylinder in the scene. So press Shift plus A, go to Mesh and select the cylinder. Now tab into the Edit mode, press S to scale it up, press 3 for the face select mode, select the top face and to delete this face, press X and select delete faces. Now press 1 for the vertex select mode and to select the entire edge loop at the top, hold down Alt and left click on the edge loop. Now let's slightly scale it up and left click to finalize. Now to give it some thickness, let's return back to the object mode, right click and select shade auto smooth. Now go to the modify properties, click on add modifier and in the generate, select the solidify modifier. Now to get some outer thickness, go to the thickness parameter and try to reduce this and we'll keep it to something like minus 0.3 and minus 0.35 and now it looks perfect. Also I think that we should make it slightly longer. So tab into the edit mode, press A to select everything and scale it up in the Z axis like this. Now to make the handle of the cup, we'll be using a bezier curve. So press shift plus A, go to curve and select the bezier curve. Let's move it in the X axis and place it over here. Now to give it the shape of a handle, let's first go to the top view by pressing 7 on the numpad, tab into the edit mode. Let's also zoom in. Now select this point of the bezier curve and press R to rotate it like this. Now left click to finalize. Also to scale it up, press A to select everything 
and let's scale it up in the x axis. Let's also slightly scale it up in the y axis like this. And now let's return back to the object mode. Now to make this curve look like the cup handle, we first need to convert it into mesh. So for this, go to the object settings and over here, you have a category known as convert and from this menu, we'll be selecting the mesh. Now if I tab into the edit mode, then you can see that instead of the endpoints, we are now having the vertices which we have when the selected object is a mesh. To give it some thickness, press A to select everything, E to extrude it in the Z axis like this. Let's also scale it up properly. So go to the top view again by pressing 7 on the numpad, press A to select everything and S to scale it up. Now to give it some thickness, in this direction also, we need to extrude these faces along the normals. So press Alt plus E and select extrude faces along normals. Now if I move my cursor, you will notice that the faces of the handle are being extruded like this. Now left click to finalize the extrusion and with this we have a simple handle ready for our cup. Now let's return back to the object mode, press 1 for the front view. Now to rotate this handle, press R, X and type 90. Let's also rotate it by 90 degrees in the Y axis, press G to move it and place it over here. Now tab into the edit mode, press A to select everything, let's scale it up in the Z axis like this. Let's also scale it up in the X axis. Also I think that its shape is not regular. So to solve this problem, let's first go to the solid mode, press Alt plus Z to turn on the X-ray mode. Let's deselect the vertices and now I'll be selecting these vertices in the middle and we'll move them in the X axis. So press O to turn on the proportional editing. Now press G and X and let's move these vertices. Also to increase the size of the circle of influence, you can use your scroll wheel. So if I scroll down, the size of the circle of influence will increase and in this way, we can make the shape of the handle look much better. Now let's also fix the ends of this handle. So for this, press C for the face select mode. Now I'll be selecting this top face. Let's go to the front view again and if I zoom in, then you can see that this end is passing through the plane. So to solve this problem, let's rotate this face by pressing R. I think that we have selected the wrong face. So let's change the angle, turn off the X-ray mode and we'll be selecting this face again. Let's go back to the front view, turn on the X-ray mode again. Let's also turn off the proportional editing tool by pressing O and now if I press R to rotate this face, then you can see here that now this face is not passing through the inside boundary of the cup. Let's also ensure this by turning off the X-ray mode and now the handle looks perfect. Let's do the same thing with this other end also. So I'll select this face at the bottom, go to the front view again, press Alt plus Z to turn on the X-ray mode, press R to rotate the face and now it looks perfect. Also, let's reduce its thickness in the Y axis. So press A to select everything and let's scale it down in the Y axis like this. Now let's return back to the object mode and finally this is how the cup is looking in the scene. Now we should also align this handle properly with the cup and to do this, let's go to the top view by pressing 7 on the numpad and with this handle selected, press G, Y and move it in the Y axis like this. Now if I change the angle, then you can see that this handle is now perfectly aligned with the cup. Now right click and select shade auto smooth. Let's also apply the bevel modifier to it. So go to the modifier properties, click on add modifier and in the generate, select the bevel modifier. Let's increase the number of segments to something like 3 or 4. Let's also increase the amount from here and we'll be keeping it to something like 0.25 or 0.3 and now it looks perfect. Now to create the fluid simulation, we need two objects in the scene. One of them will be the domain and the other will be a flow object. So for this, let's first add a cube in the scene which will act as the domain. So press shift plus A, go to mesh and select the cube, tab into the edit mode, press S to scale it up like this. Now let's go to the front view by pressing 1 on the numpad. Let's also go to the wireframe display. Let's scale this cube up in the Z axis like this. Now press G, Z and move it up like this and we'll make sure that the base of the cube is touching with the cup base. Let's also go to the side view by pressing 3 on the numpad and from this angle also, the size of the cube is looking perfect. So now we have the domain ready and for the flow object, you can choose any object like the cube or a UV sphere and in this case, I'll be choosing the UV sphere. So press Shift plus A, go to mesh and select the UV sphere, tab into the edit mode, let's scale it down slightly. Now let's return back to the object mode, press G, Z and move it up in the Z axis. Now to add the fluid simulation, let's go to the physics properties and turn on the fluid simulation. In the type, select the flow and in the flow type, select the liquid. Also, to ensure a continuous supply of fluid, change the flow behavior to the inflow. Now I'll select this cube, go to the physics properties and select the fluid, then in the type, select the domain and in the domain type, select the liquid. Let's take the pointer back to the frame number one and now if I press the space bar to play the animation, then you can see that we have the fluid emerging from the UV sphere but since the domain is set to the cube, as a result, it is taking the volume of the cube into consideration and not the volume of the cup. So what we basically want is that the fluid should collide with the cup in the scene. So for this, select the cup, go to the physics properties and turn on fluid. Now in the type, we have one more option apart from the domain and the flow and this is the effector. And if I turn it on, then now the fluid that flows from the UV sphere will take the domain cube into consideration. However, it will also collide with the cup in the scene. But right now if I press the space bar to play the animation, the fluid that flows from the UV sphere will still pass through the cup. And the reason behind this is that the cup that we have in our scene has some surface thickness which the fluid simulation is not taking into consideration. And to solve this problem, with this cup selected, go 
to the fluid simulation settings and over here you have an option which is called the surface thickness. By default its value is set to 0 and that is why we were getting this error. But if I increase this value to 0.5, now let's replay the animation one more time by pressing the spacebar and now you will notice that the fluid that is flowing from the UV sphere will collide with the cup this time instead of passing through it. And in this way we are able to create a simple animation of some fluid flowing into a cup. Now let's go to the solid mode and to complete a final animation we need to change some minor settings. So first of all I will be joining this cup and the handle together into a single object. So for this first I'll select the handle then with the shift key hold it select the cup. Now to join them together press ctrl plus j. Now to hide this domain object let's press the space bar to play the animation and then immediately stop the animation. Now let's select the UV sphere and we'll be moving it in the x axis and we'll also give it some initial velocity so that the direction of flow is not completely straight. So for this press g x and move it in the x axis. Now go to the physics properties and turn on the initial velocity and in the initial x value I'll be entering 3 meters per second. Now let's check the animation. So take the pointer back to the frame number 1 and press the space bar and we can see here that the direction of the flow is opposite and also the velocity is very low. So let's go to the initial x velocity again and this time we'll be entering minus 5 meter per second. Now let's replay the animation one more time and finally this is how the fluid animation is looking in the scene. Now moving ahead we'll be working on improving the quality of the fluid and for this let's go back to the frame number 0, select the domain object and in the physics settings change the resolution division value to 64 and now to view the animation scroll down and in the cache settings change the type to modular and turn on the is resumable. Now scroll up and from here click on the bake data and once the baking is done scroll down and in the mesh settings click on the bake mesh and after this if I press the space bar to play the animation then this is how our final animation looks. We have created a simple yet interesting fluid simulation where the fluid is flowing into this cup in the scene. To make it look even better right click and select shade smooth and now we are ready to give some material to both the cup as well as the fluid. So for this let's go to the material preview mode. Now with the fluid selected let's go to the material properties. Let's also change the frame to somewhere near 130 or 140. Now let's create a new material. Let's change the base color from here and I'll be choosing the orange color. Now let's reduce the roughness to somewhere near 0. Now go to the transmission and increase the weight to a value of anywhere between 0.9 and 1. Now scroll down and turn on the ray trace transmission. Also in the render properties do ensure that you have turned on the ray tracing also since we are making the juice so I think that we should reduce the transmission value. So go to the material properties and in the transmission weight let's reduce it to something like 0.3 or 0.4 and now it looks perfect. If you want you can change the base color from here and assign any color that you want but for now I'll be choosing the mix of orange and yellow. Then for the cup let's create a kind of plastic material for it. So I'll select the cup click on the new button let's change the base color from here and I'll be assigning the blue color. Let's also reduce the roughness to somewhere near 0 and now we are ready to view the animation. So let's take the pointer back to the frame number 1 and press the space bar to play the animation. And finally this is how our final animation is looking. We have this fluid flowing from a UV sphere into a plastic cup which has the affected type selected in the fluid simulation. Also you can make the animation look even more interesting by selecting the UV sphere and in the physics properties you can try to change the value of initial velocity. Like if you want you can move this UV sphere in the positive x axis and then give a value to the initial x velocity as something around minus 7 or minus 10 meter per second and in this way you can give your animations a completely different look. And with this we now arrive to the end of this chapter. Today we learnt about the fluid simulation in Blender and the different types of settings in the fluid simulation. Then we also created a simple scene with a cup and some juice flowing into it with the help of fluid simulations. And so our next chapter will be the chapter number 68 fire simulation in Blender. So don't forget to subscribe to our channel, press that notification bell so that you can get timely updates about the upcoming chapters. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next one.